Now we're on page 104. This is exercise 39. And uh, this is the only uh, ECG strip in all the rhythms that we've seen so far that is not an adult. This is a, a six-year-old child that I transported who was in respiratory distress. And uh, clearly you can see it's not a very good tracing. This is a, a child who was distressed and there was quite a bit of artifact. And our objective is to try to get a clear tracing. So try to get the child to stay still or try to put the electrodes somewhere w away from large muscle mass or an area of the body that's not moving so much. Uh, but it can be a challenge, especially when you're dealing with a child who's crying and upset and distressed. And that was the case here. But um, let's look at some of the key areas here. So the heart rate's about 150. This is an arresting six-year-old child. Now that's high, but not alarmingly high. In a six-year-old, we'd be worried if we saw the heart rate above 180. That's when we start to think about the possibility of um, a supraventricular tachycardia versus a sinus tachycardia. This child also had a fever, and a high heart rate is consistent with a fever. And... Um, uh, the heart rate, you know, will vary uh, when it's a sinus tachycardia. The P waves are present and upright, although it's a little difficult to discern here at times. And the PR interval is uh, about uh, 0.10 second. The QRS is narrow. The ratio is one to one. The rhythm is regular. And here's the key: when you're having difficulties discerning P waves here, you want to map out the R to R interval. And in this case, if you if you were to take a paper um, with your exercise book, your uh, workbook and map these out, you find that the ardor interval is consistent throughout. And that uh, lends strong support to the fact that this is uh, a sinus tachycardia uh, in combination with the rate rather than an SVT uh, or some other kind of dysrhythmia. So the interpretation is simply sinus tachycardia with a heart rate of about 150.